Hi, I'm Roddy Damalis and I'm here with Paul Lambis and his team. We've decided to go Christmassy in absolutely every way. We've decided to make you a couple of delicious, delicious little Christmas goodies, easy Christmas goodies uh, for your guests. And we've decided to decorate as we uh, on outside of the, <laughs> the Fed School campus Christmas. Christmas is a time that you can actually just take out everything fabulous and shiny and glitzy and use it. So you'll have a look that I've taken out my candelabrum, I've taken out my grandmother's uh, silverware, every uh, bit of uh, a teapot to decorate with etc. And this is what I'd like you to do because a lot of times we leave these things in the cupboard and we don't actually use them. So back to the food side of things, what I'm going to do for today is uh, create two little startery snacky canapé kind of uh, items that you can serve to your guests on arrival uh, if you're having a dinner party. So the one is going to be dried figs which are stuffed with Rockford cheese and Parma ham and the second one is a brie cheese which is topped with mixed berries, fresh thyme and orange rind. To round off with we're going to use our Melo Macarona which are the honey and walnut macaroons. Let's start right now with the figs. Of course it depends on where you are <laughs> in the world, uh, figs, fresh figs might be in season. So please feel free to use fresh figs ex instead of the dried figs that I've used over here. What I've done, uh, and again, what a joy to actually have everybody from all over the world besides our beautiful island Cyprus uh, viewing uh, this program today. I find that absolutely wonderful. So hi to everybody from across the globe. What we've done over here is that I've actually just left these dried figs overnight in, uh, in just some cold water. So they become dehydrated and nice and plumped. So what we're gonna do is just take the little top off, cut the cap off like that. You'll see that I've made some extras just in case. So I'm gonna use five of them so you find the, the plumpest, juiciest ones. Okay, and then what I'd like you to do is just really, really gently stick your finger, your thumb, just cut through so that we know that they're all loose. So then what you do is just really gently create a cavity so that we can stuff the Rockford cheese into it. What I'd like you to do now is just take some black pepper and crack it. If you had just taken cracked pepper that you had in a, in a jar somewhere, then you're not going to get that really fresh peppery flavor. So what we're going to do is take a piece of uh, a beautifully shaved parma ham. I mean, you can see it's paper thin. And then I'd like you just to, to take a little ribbon of it and plant it on top of the Rockford and be quite liberal with it. So that's our beautiful Parma ham. We're then going to take the black pepper because we want the, 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 the contrast with the, with the cheese. We want the contrast with the sweetness of, of the fig. And, so, and also look at the color because obviously we're looking at color, we're looking at flavor, we're looking at texture, we're looking at the aroma. So these are absolutely gorgeous and those are ready to be popped into the oven. Okay, we've got a, a baking tray over here, which I'm just gonna pop them into. And I'm going to set them aside. I have preheated my oven. Um, been a standing thing with my mother and I a hundred years uh, being in, in, in the restaurant industry is that I don't know the difference between off and full on, on temperature so I usually use full and actually just watch it okay there obviously are certain recipes that you've got to actually maintain a lower uh, a, a lower temperature but what I'd like you to do is just on uh, fan assisted uh, turn it on to as high as what your uh, oven will go so the next one is going to be the brie with mixed berries fresh 
Irish thyme and orange rind. What we're going to do here is that we again, the, the actual sauce could be made two or three days before, or if you want to be really cute is go make it two weeks before and freeze it. So all that needs to happen is that your sauce is ready or your topping is ready and then you literally need five minutes to pop it into the oven and, uh, uh, and, and serve it. Now the joy of this particular recipe, I'm going to chat whilst I'm whilst I'm making, uh, getting it ready. So the joy of this recipe is that you can either do a slab of brie, which we're gonna do and then present it on a beautiful platter, or the other option is, again, what I recommend to people is, is to actually take those five minutes extra and actually plate uh, individual uh, items, either your starters, your main course, your soup, etc. Or you can do an entire four, five, six course meal by taking five minutes extra and plating six or, or eight dishes. It takes absolutely no time and it takes just that little bit more creativity and you'll dazzle uh, your guests. For me, there's nothing worse than going to all the effort and then just taking your salad or taking your, your sides, chucking them into a, in, into a bowl and putting them onto, onto the table. You've gone to so much effort um, take it to the extra to, to that extra little uh, level so we want an orange a nice ripe orange and what we want is the finest part of your uh, grater and what we want to do is just remove the rind however what a lot of people make the mistake of is going too far down the skin you do not want to see white you don't want to see the actual pit so what we're going to do is just take the outer layer immediately the entire space uh, has the aroma of fresh fresh orange so what happens here is that you go just the rind uh, because you don't want to have that bitterness in, in in your topping you want the freshness of the orange take either your hand Again, guys, don't be scared of getting your hands dirty. So, we've popped the orange rind into the, into the saucepan. What we want to do is add some sugar to this. I'm not going to give you quantities. A, because I can't deal with having to weigh and measure. Uh, it turned me inside out to create my two uh, uh, recipe books that, that, that I've uh, uh, produced. And the, uh, it was the most incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, creative experience. But the worst part of it was weighing and measuring in order to, uh, to, 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 to formulate the recipes. But what I am going to do is that I'm going to send uh, the recipes for Paul to, to, to publicize for you. So all the grams and, and, uh, and, and measurements and, 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 and temperatures temperatures etc will, will be there. Actually there's no way I've ever taken a spice and used a spoon or a measuring. It's, it's that. It's that. And the other thing that I swear by is that if I've made a recipe a thousand times I will still taste it before uh, uh, I, I actually serve it. So we all, we're all human. We might stop halfway through a recipe and go and answer a phone or a door uh, uh, and, 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 and we might forget a, a key ingredient. So always, always taste before you, before you serve. Okay, so we've got that over there. We now have some beautiful fresh thyme, which I've gotten straight out of my new herb garden, which I'm really, really proud of. So fresh, fresh thyme. Again, as we said with the pepper, it smells gorgeous as it is. However, if you extract the, the, the maximum flavor out of the thyme or any fresh herb by just rolling over it, you'll see that you're extracting the essential oils and, and, and extra flavor out of it. So it's the same ingredient, and if you don't do that, you're not getting maximum flavor. Another way of handling that is just taking the back of a spoon and just smacking it, but very gently. I mean, don't take all your frustrations out on it, just pat it gently so that you can actually get the flavor out of it. So here we go. These are gonna pop into, the, into here as well. And then what we're gonna do is just slice our orange over here and just squeeze the extra juice into that. Of course I could just use a lemon squeezer but then I wouldn't look as fabulous as what I'm trying to look right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> and they wouldn't be getting my hands dirty. So there's your extra flavor and we're not throwing anything away. I have a, an incredible aversion to throwing things away. What I now want to do is just add a little bit of water just to get it to consistency. And then I'm just gonna show you what we're looking like right now. And this is just gonna get popped onto the stove to simmer. Whilst that's simmering, we're just going to prepare the brie. What I'd like you to do is just take the brie and take a sharp knife and just score it. We could just pour our sauce right over this. However, if we're scoring it, the actual flavors are going into the brie. It's the same as marinating a piece of chicken or a, a pork chop or a steak or something like that. And if you, if you want, you could and just score it very, very discreetly so that, so that the, the, the marinade actually permeates uh, uh, the steak or the, or the chicken fillet. So with that over there is ready. What I'm going to do now is go back to, the, to our saucepan and show you how it's bubbling away and show you the consistency that the syrup has to get to. So you'll have a look over here and you've got nice, thick, plump, lazy bubbles. So what, what you have over here is a syrup that pours in one single stream. So if that was pouring in droplets, it means that the syrup has not bound yet. So what we're going to do here is just remove the thyme and into this syrup that we have over here. What we're going to do now is just take our berries. For those of us that don't live in countries that have fresh berries, etc., I've used frozen berries and I'm an advocate of frozen certain items because of the fact that you have consistency. So what I've got is some really good quality frozen mixed berries, which I'm going to pop in here, and I, I want the sauce as well. We're not going to cook the berries, so that's as far as what we go. The only thing we're gonna do now is add some black pepper. There we go. Our oven is hot. It's been preheated. We're now going to take our, our berry sauce and pour it over the brie. I'm going to leave a couple of the berries in the saucepan just to, to decorate on top afterwards. So that's all we're going to do now. That's going to get popped into the oven with the figs. We're now going on to our dessert. Beautiful glasses, use a champagne glass, use a wine glass, use a parfait glass, use a beautiful dish if you have to, as long as it's beautiful and you feel proud to present it. We're now going to start off with our melo macarona, which as we mentioned are honey and walnut macaroons, also with a hint of orange. Christmas starts for me in Cyprus when, when the Melo Macarona start coming out in the, in, in the bakeries. So over here, I've done just a plain custard, full, uh, full uh, uh, cream uh, milk, etc., etc. Don't do my, don't do any of those skimmed goodies, etc., because this is Christmas and you want all the flavors. So it's got vanilla, but it's got a pinch of cinnamon as well. So we're just going to pour over. You'll see that the consistency is quite thick because I don't want it to, to, to melt the melo macarona. So do you see that we're just adding a little bit over there and then we're going to just crumble another one on top loosely a little more of the custard. So that's what we've got over there. And then I've got some walnuts that I'm going to sprinkle on top. And that's your dessert. Absolutely easy, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely Christmassy. Just before you're going to serve them, you're going to take your cinnamon syrup and do that with.
there we go. Our figs are out. And our brie is absolutely gorgeous. So, what we're gonna do now is just pop the brie onto a platter. What we're going to do is just turn, the, pour the caramelized syrup over the brie, around the platter, and that to me is one of the most gorgeous, gorgeous starters. We've kept some of our berries, and those will be scattered. Beautiful Christmassy colors. So talking about getting out all those beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, things from, from, from the cupboards uh, that we don't use all year, this is a magnificent fish and uh, hand carved uh, bone, bone handle fish knife. I know it's not appropriate, but it's beautiful. So that's why we're gonna use this. Kalisa Sorexi, bon appétit. Nice and easy, hopefully very, very impressive. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody the most beautiful, beautiful Christmas. I'd like to wish you a fun-filled, carefree Christmas and above all, a healthy Christmas and, and, and festive season. I would like as well to thank everybody for their wonderful, wonderful response and uh, support of my new project up here at, at My View. As you see, this is my kitchen. This is where all the new magic is happening. Uh, I'm looking forward to welcome uh, to welcoming the rest of you that haven't been here so far i'm looking forward to welcoming my Pyatakia guests that I, I i have become friends with and family with over the years and uh, again wishing everybody the most beautiful 2022